And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman, where we speak about your life, your money, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you like this, please hit the like button up below. And if you've not yet done so, please, please, please subscribe to both the YouTube channel and to the podcast, okay? Just please do that for me. I'm begging you, I'm begging Anyway. Um, a lot is made about retirement, okay? People say, I can't wait until I retire. Wow, when I retire, that's it. It's going to be awesome. Except you don't think about when you retire is the need to sort of, for lack of a better word, redefine yourself, I would say. There are a few points people need to think about when it comes to the day after they retire. Some of it has to do with money. Some of it is more psychological. I'd like to speak to just a, a few of these points. Number one, obviously, is income right? Once you retire, you know that you're no longer going to get a paycheck, but there's a certain comfort, a certain security in knowing that you're going to get paid, you know, on the first and the 15th of every month or the first of the month, depending how they pay you in your, uh, how it's customary for you to be paid in your country of origin. And um, not having that security, that financial security of a paycheck coming in can be daunting for some people. I know a lot of people who are like super nervous. There's a lot of anxiety over the fact that they no longer have that coming. So some of that can be solved by if you have a pension or you're going to get um, social security in the States or, you know, in Israel's Bituach Lomi or whatever state sponsored sort of social safety net um, is offered that helps cover that. It also probably behooves you to create a steady income stream whether that's from a rental check that, that you own, you own an investment property and you have rent money coming in, whether you have dividends that are coming in on a, you know, on a quarterly basis or interest income from bonds or what have you from fixed income, those can help. I've, I've just seen it, right? It helps go a long way into creating ease of mind, I would say, along with the pension and whatever, and, and sort of replacing the paycheck, knowing that you can count on X amount of money coming in on a fixed basis, um, as opposed to saying, well, I've got a pile of money in the bank or in the stock market and I'll sell as I need. That's a little bit more, you know, you might have tremendous amounts of money, more money than you'll ever be able to spend. But still, I've seen people in that situation where they don't have that same peace of mind because they oh, I've got to sell and what should I sell? It becomes, you know, anxiety filled as opposed to just having a fixed amount of money coming in every month. So that's something to think about and something pre-retirement, right? What are you going to do to replace that income, that check that's coming in every month and try and replicate that, whether again, through pension, social security combination, rental income, dividend income that's coming in. Um, that's number one. Number two is how you define yourself, sort of your identity. Like whenever, you know, whenever you meet somebody new at a party, and I can tell you that because I'm just like a party animal. I'm always going to parties, meeting new people. No, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> anyway, whenever you meet somebody new, it inevitably within the first three questions after like, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do, right? What is it that you do? What's your line of work? Maybe that's superficial, but that's sort of how society tends to define people these days. And once you're retired, your answer could be, well, I'm retired. I've seen a lot of people not be so comfortable with that answer. So you've got to sort of, I would say almost, figure it out, right? What is it that you want to say? Well, you could say, well, I used to work at uh, Lighthouse Capital. I used to work at Microsoft. That might be helpful. That might be a good answer. Or it might be the leading in almost to the, to the next thing I want to say. And it's, it's finding meaning um, in your life once you're retired. It might not be meaningful to go to work, right? And, you know, if you're flipping hamburgers or if you're working on an assembly line or you're creating software, you might be able to find meaning in it, that you're helping people, you're helping society, but ultimately you're sort of a small cog in a very, very, very big wheel. But still, um, I think people find meaning in it. Um, they find pride and certainly find identity um, when they work. And now you're retired. Now what? I strongly encourage people to, whether it's volunteering, that's number one on my bucket list of things that people should do for sure. Because it also, it's not just that it helps run out the clock, so to speak, but it gives you something meaningful to do. You're actually helping society and you're keeping yourself busy at the same time, you know, sort of killing two birds with one stone, so to speak. And it also gives you identity. Well, I'm volunteering at, with the United Way, right? I'm volunteering with fill in the blank, right? I'm working with disadvantaged children. I'm working in uh, some peripheral town, getting young children up to snuff educationally. I'm teaching them to read. I'm, you know, working in the local botanical garden. I don't know. 
whatever it is, you're contributing to society. And that also not only does that give you something meaningful and fulfilling to do and take up time, right? It actually gives you a way to fill up your day as opposed to sitting around and watching Netflix all day. It also helps give you identity, which I think those are like three things which are really, really important so that, you know, ultimately you have a fulfilling retirement. Keep in mind, you're not, chances are you're not going to retire for three or four years, right? You could be retired for a long time, decades, right? So it's, it really is, there's no, it's not coincidence that people call it, you know, the second phase or your second career, because you have to be smart about planning it, which leads us into the sort of final thing I want to speak about. And that's creating yourself a day right? Structure. We know this even from where we've been employed, right? For the, for, you know, the previous couple of years, right? When Corona, when, when COVID was out there and people were home and there were lockdowns, structure was thrown out the window. There was no structure. In our house, I don't even know, the kids woke up at like one in the afternoon, eight, okay? Then they ate again and we had what was called, then they, like at 12, they all gathered around and watched some show. And we had what was called the 12 o'clock or midnight feeding because they wanted to eat again. And, you know, that, I don't know how healthy that is, right? To wake up at one o'clock every day. You need structure. Get up in the morning, right? You have to have a reason to do things. It might be fun the first week that you're retired to lounge around in your pajamas and maybe wake up late, sleep in, whatever it is. But that's going to get awfully tired, old, very quickly, right? And you're not going to do that for the next 25 years. Right. So you have to have structure, right? Get up in the morning, you know, work out, read, you know, go to prayers. I don't know, whatever it is, but give yourself a day, create a structure in the day. You don't have to go, you know, you don't have to work 20 hours a day. You can certainly take it easy. You can enjoy yourself during the day. You can rest, but you need to have some structure. I think it's really, really important, which also leads in part of the structure is also one of the things people lose at work is sort of the community feeling, the togetherness. You might not be friends with people at work, but you see people all the time. There's a social interaction that you have. And all of a sudden, once you retire, you might have, you might, I just heard this from people, you might have a void that you need to fill, right? It might not be so simple all of a sudden. Well, at least I met people when I went to make coffee in the, you know, in the coffee room, I saw Jan and we spoke, you know, and I saw Frank, you know, uh, when we were walking into the building, into the elevator together. And, you know, you have teams uh, at work and all kinds of things. So there is a, there's a huge social or communal aspect um, to going to work every day, which you do not have either when you're working at home, but we'll leave that uh, aside from time being. Um, you don't have that when you are retired right? That's, that's a real issue that I find. So part of the thing, I it's to go back to the volunteering aspect, but and having structure, one of the things you have to put into your day, I think, is having some kind of social interaction. It's very tough for those of us who are not social butterflies, who tend to be more introverted, okay? Work is a huge, tremendous outlet for that. You can, you know, you, like I said, you can just meet somebody over the water cooler and you can, you know, there, there's an X. I, I spoke to somebody today, right? I had social interaction with somebody today. Again, once you're retired, it's not so simple. And again, if you're introverted, it's even more not so simple. So you really have to figure out a way, whether it's volunteering or what have you, being, you know, being part of groups that do anything from, from exercise to playing pinochle or whatever it is, right? Do something in your day that gives you that added social interaction. Because I think it's really needed. It's needed mentally. It's needed for sanity, just to, you know, be with other people, it's healthy, right? And, and it's healthy because you create that framework again. You have a framework where other people and other people look in on you and check in on you and know what's going on. And it, it creates a community is important, right? Otherwise, we would just all sort of be living independently, but we obviously place an emphasis on community. So these are some things that you might want to think about as you are approaching retirement. People don't think about these things very often. There's not a lot written about it, I don't think. But it is something just from my experience speaking with retirees um, that comes up. So if you want to have a successful, both financially successful retirement and let's call it a socially, mentally well-being type of retirement, you may want to take some of these tips to heart. You've been tuning into the Aaron Katzman Show. We speak to you about life, money, and your investments. Please hit the like button below. And if you've not yet done so, please, please, please subscribe to both the YouTube channel and to the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll speak to you soon.